Hi everyone! Today I'm going to make a swirled trinket tray using products from Just For You online. This was one that I made previously, so to make this one I used the one coat resin that we're going to be using today. I also used the sapphire blue mica pigment and the chameleon pigment in lilac blue green. So this is the same style that we're going to make today, just we're going to use some different colours. So the products I've got ready, I've got the one coat resin, which is the high viscosity resin from Just For You Online. This one is perfect when you want to have a defined uh, shape within your make. So for a swirl, this one is going to be excellent because it's going to hold its own shape within the mould. Um, for the colour of the swirl, I am using two glitters from the Essential Glitter Set. This one is the Fine Champagne Glitter, which is a lovely pale gold. And I'm also going to be mixing that with the fine rose gold. So combined, they should make a lovely colour. For the backdrop of the coasters then, I'm actually going to marble together the Supreme White Epoxy Pigment Paste and the Rose Gold Pigment Mica Pigment. And I'm just going to swirl some of that through the white to give a marbled effect. Um, as always today, I've got my nitrile gloves for skin protection. I've got mixing pots and lollipop sticks. I've got some silicon mixing cups for mixing up my resin. I've got one smaller one for making the swirl because that won't need as much resin. And then I've got a slightly larger one for mixing up the backdrop. And then last but not least, I've got my tray mould. This is just um, the normal size tray mould that you can get from most uh, mould shops, just silicon mould. Okay, let's go. So in my mixing pot, I've measured out 30 mils of one coat resin and 30 mils of hardener. And I'm just going to mix these together now with my wooden lollipop stick. Um, as I said, the one coat is a higher viscosity resin. So if you're used to working with the high gloss resin from Just For You Online, um, which is a thinner viscosity, you will notice that this one is much thicker when you come to stir it. And also you might notice that there are more bubbles as you're mixing it together. Um, but don't worry, lots of these bubbles will pop on their own. They'll come to the surface and pop and any that don't, you'll be able to pop easily at the end with um, a blowtorch or heat gun or long handled lighter. This resin has got a mix time of about three minutes. Um, I've warmed my resin first as well. This also helps with the bubble release, but it helps with the mixing too. So this resin is mixing really nicely. Um, it's got a heat resistance of up to 100 degrees, so it makes it great for top coating coasters or trays. And because it's high viscosity, it's got a really good surface tension. So it's fantastic for creating artwork, but also for creating um, a design such as circles or droplets or the swirl that we're doing in the tray that I'm showing you today. So I'm just going to mix this resin together now for three minutes. It's always worth keeping an eye on the resin itself. Um, at the end of the three minutes, if you can see any streaks, make sure you scrape the sides of your pot well to get any bits of resin or hardener away from the sides. Um, and if you can see any streaks, then it's okay to keep mixing for slightly longer than three minutes as well. So after three minutes, we'll come back and then we can add our glitter. Okay, so this resin has now been mixed for about three minutes. I can see that there are no streaks left. It's gone lovely and clear and it's gone to a nice liquid consistency. As I said before, there are lots of bubbles in there at the moment, but don't be alarmed. Lots of those bubbles are going to disappear on their own. So all I'm gonna do now, I'm going to pour the contents of this into my paper cup that I've got ready. And I'm gonna make sure that I get every last bit of resin out. Lollipop sticks are a great little tool for helping get the last bits of resin out of a silicon pot like this. Okay, and then what I like to do just for an extra good measure is just gently in my paper cup give another small mix because any bits of resin that were stuck to the sides that you've now scraped off and brought into this container 
you can make sure that they all get mixed together. Right, I'm going to add my glitter now. Even though this resin is going to stand for 10 minutes, I'm going to add the glitter now while it's slightly more liquid because I'll fi I find that it's going to mix a bit easier. So then I'm going to go in with the rose gold first. I want this to have a slightly more pink tone, so I'm going to do three of the rose gold, just the end of a lollipop stick. And to start, I'm just going to do one of the champagne because gold is always a slightly more dominant colour and I don't want it to take over that beautiful rose gold. So just one of the champagne to start with. You can always add more if you don't have the colour that you're looking for. But I want this to be quite pink. actually just switched my light on just so you can see the colour in a little bit more clarity so it's quite dark in here today so you can check now that that's the consistency of the glitter you want I'm happy with that I'm happy with the colour so I'm now going to leave that to stand for 10 minutes I'm just going to quickly show you these again in a better colour in a better light so that's the rose gold They've gone a bit dark in here, so I've just quickly put my ring light on. <laughs> and that's the champagne. OK, so the glitters are mixed into the resin. This is just going to stand now for about 10 to 15 minutes, just until it starts to feel like it's getting a little bit warm and it's increased in thickness a little. And then we'll be ready to pour our swirl. Right, so this resin has been sitting for about 10 minutes now. The cup is starting to feel quite warm and the resin has thickened up, but it is still of a pouring consistency. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to make a little spout and I'm going to pour my swirl. You don't have to do swirls. You could do lines, you could do dots. but I like to have a swirl running through my tray. You can also use, because I've got quite a bit left over. Again, you don't have to do this. But you can give your tray a nice glittery border. Or just even add in some extra designs. We can see the resin is holding that its shape beautifully in the tray. I'm just going to zoom in slightly for you to see. So it's holding its shape lovely in there and this resin is going to be touch dry in just a matter of hours. So we'll be able to come back later on today and do the backdrop layer. OK, so it's been about two to three hours now and the resin that we poured earlier is now touch dry. I can touch it with my glove lightly and it's not tacky and pulling away with the glove. So that's going to be perfect now for pouring our background layer on the top. So what I've done is I've mixed up 160 mils of resin and I've poured about 130 into this cup and I'm only about 30 into this cup. Um, I'm still using the one coat resin. And the reason for that is when we're creating marbling, I want the two colours to um, remain as separate as possible so that you get those threads of colour running through the white. So I'm going to colour the larger pot white as I want this to be our main colour. And I'm using the Supreme White Epoxy Pigment Paste from Just For You Online. So I'm going to take... A nice size amount just on the end of a lollipop stick and I'm going to mix that through if you're using white as the base color for your marbling 
make sure that you mix it really, really well. White is quite a heavy pigment, which is why in resin it's used for creating um, flowers and really cool special effects with alcohol inks and also for creating waves on ocean art. And it's because it's a heavy pigment and it will sink through the resin. So you wanna make sure you mix it really, really well and have no streaks left. So it's a good idea, scrape the side of your lollipop stick against the side of your cup. And even if it takes a fair bit of time, really, really mix that color well into your resin. With marble, there are often little imperfections in the stone anyway, so I'm not going to be worried if I do get any bits of white sinking to the bottom, but I do want to have as minimal amount of that as possible. So I'm just gonna make sure that that's well mixed together. And you can see with the one coat as well, lots of the bubbles, as I said earlier, have disappeared already. Okay, um, for the colour, I'm going to be using the rose gold pigment from Just For You Online, which is a lovely pink with a hint of pale gold running through it. And because I've only got a small amount of resin in this pot, I'm only gonna take a small amount of the pigment. And again, I'm just gonna mix this so that it's really evenly dispersed and I've got no bits of unmixed powder in my resin. So I've just spent a little bit of time making sure that both of these are fully mixed, that we've got no blobs of powder and no streaks of white. And now I'm gonna create the marble for the backdrop of our tray. Um, when creating a marble effect in resin, it's really important not to overmix the colour that you're marbling through your base colour too much, because otherwise you will lo lose the vein effect from the marble that you want. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my pot of colour and from a height, I'm going to pour that into my white and I'm just going to scrape out some bits. Don't worry too much that it's all falling into a blob because what we're going to do now is gently we're going to just bring these two together to make a swirl. So as I said the key is not to over mix. The reason we've poured from a height is to ensure that the colour goes all the way down to the bottom of the cup. And all I'm going to do now is one swirl and over. And it doesn't look as if it's going to have mixed right the way through, but it will have made its way to the bottom of the cup. So we're now going to use our marble and we're going to pour it on top of our tray. So the best thing is to look at your cup and decide where it looks a good area to pour. I'm going to turn it and pour this way. And I'm just going to run it over my tray like this. You can see it has gone right the way to the bottom of the cup. And just make sure you fill to the top. So the temptation with resin is to start poking it or fiddling with it, but when you've done marble, it's really best to leave it alone as much as possible. So all I'm gonna do is just lightly swirl my lollipop stick like that. And I'm going to use my long handled lighter just to pop any bubbles, of which there are hardly any. And then I'm just going to leave it alone. So I will see you in a few hours for the demold. So it's the next day now. Our tray is hardened and is cured, so now it's time to demold. And we'll have a look and see what it looks like.
So you can see we've got that gorgeous swirl that we made with the glitter and we've got that lovely soft marbling effect that we made with the white and the rose gold. And you can make this in any colour combination that you like. You don't have to use glitter, you can use all glitters, you don't have to marble. But yeah, so there we go, a resin swirl tray. So thank you so much for watching. Everything I used to make this was from Just For You Online. I hope you've enjoyed and see you again soon.